Charcoal smile. I live in the sea, in the sea, with the spiders and the enemies. They are, but I would call very good company at all. But they're the company I keep. Can't be too picky in the deep. And hey, who am I to say what's really good company? There's a planet, and there's a planet in outer space. In outer space. And on this planet, on this planet, there lives an alien race. Alien I know a girl race. there. She's got a bone in her nose, and she dances like she's drowning when she takes off all her clothes. Hello, and welcome to the morning show. How's everyone doing? Can you hear me? I'm in a new setup, so I had to set everything up again. My camera seems too zoomed in, so I'm gonna fix that. Happy Monday morning to everyone. Hope you are doing well. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Hope you're feeling good. All that stuff. Appreciate you tuning in. Let's see who we got. Morning to Norm. Good morning to Detroit Dabber. Josh, don't forget the intro. Osborne, welcome to the morning show. It's bite-sized bits of everything that I enjoy. Do a little American Towns, talk about a random baseball player, listen to some music. Then at the end, we do some some light reading. How about that? Some rabbit holes, basically. Uh, over on Facebook, we got Travis Miller. Miss the watching series. Yeah, me too. Um, Jake and I put ourselves into a bit of a bind with uh, how much we do, Travis, because... I'd like to do the watchings again. They don't, quote unquote, benefit the company. Like if we had a CEO, they'd be like, stop wasting your time on that. Only a thousand people watch every episode. But when those thousand people are like, make more, make more, it makes me want to make more because we enjoy doing it. So it's funny. Enrique, good to see you again. How are you? Corey, how are you? Austin Periscope, good to see you. Eric Torres, John, Todd Father. How's everyone doing? Um, all right. So I'm excited that I'm feeling good enough to do this again. Uh, I This is my 10th day since symptoms, which uh, the CDC says 10 days from the first day of your symptoms, you can start like being around people again. I'm still not doing that. Um, we, I couldn't handle being in small, tiny New York city apartment and, and not being able to go outside. So we packed up our stuff. We got into our own car. We're just us. And we drove down the shore and, uh, the first, the first floor of my parents' house is our quarantine bill right now for like a couple more days. And then, and then, and then we're fine. But just to make sure we're safe, we're, we're keeping the office closed until the playoffs start. So I'm down here all week and the weekend. Um, I already feel better. Fresh air, nice ocean breeze. It's the best place in the entire world and my favorite place. So I'm excited. Now we just need Caitlin, my fiance, to start feeling better. And we're golden. Um, I feel good. I, I feel good. I mean, it was the weekend was just I never slept so much in my adult life. I felt like I was a teenager again. I mean, I slept until noon night without even trying. And then I woke up and I ate like a tiny meal. And then I laid, I was going to lay back in bed and watch a movie. And I fell asleep again until uh, like 3.30. I did never slept so much. So that was crazy. Um, the first two days were like chills and, and like really, really, really like strong flu. And then after that, it was just sore throat and tired. 
So damn tired. Anyway, that song at the beginning is by Bob Schneider. I don't know all of his stuff. I love that song. It makes me feel all like childhood happy. I don't get it. Anyone else get sick in the office or fam? Uh, well, every test result that we've gotten back has been negative so far, but we still have to wait on a handful of test results from some people from the office and some um, family members. But, you know, my fiance's we're guessing is positive because she's got a lot of symptoms. Um, she's a little behind me. So, I don't know. We're good. All right. Welcome to the morning show. How's everyone doing? I'm excited to be back. Uh, hopefully, I can do this five days a week again. And then, you know, we will, once the playoffs come, we got to figure out our plan. Because the first <clears throat> week and a half of playoffs with 16 teams in and eight games is going to be crazy. So we might have to, you know, I was thinking maybe at first I was saying, let's not tell Jake and, and tell myself like, well, maybe I can't even do more and during October during the playoffs because every night's going to be a late night staying up, working late. But as it goes and teams wind down, once you really get to the, the championship series and there's only two games a night, it's really kind of easy. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll play it by, by ear, but I think so. Ear, ears of corn. I watched Hoosiers, Hoosiers last night. I didn't watch it though. I listened to it. I, I darkened my laptop screen and just had the audio on, and I just listened to Hoosiers as if it was a podcast, because I've seen it so much that you can just kind of envision what all the scenes are. The opening shots of Hoosiers. If anyone ever wanted to buy me art. The opening shots of Hoosiers, rural Indiana, America in the fall. That's like Americana paintings I would want. So mark that down on everyone that keeps a list of what kind of art I would want to buy Jimmy. And your list has been blank for a while. Now you have it. And I realized that in Hoosiers, they do that whole chant. We want Jimmy. We want Jimmy. And I should start using that as like the intro. <laughs> The intro song to Mars. <laughs> Just start playing that in a black screen and act as if, you know, the crowd's really cheering for me to step up to the mic to do the morning show. <laughs> I don't know if I, you can't really do that for yourself. Whatever. All right. All right. The random town of the day is Lodi, California. Someone in the YouTube chat said uh, uh, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Sons of Anarchy isn't from there, but they're from like a fictional town next to Lodi. Uh, But Lodi, California, made famous by the Creedence Clearwater Revival song, Lodi. Oh, I'm stuck in old Lodi again. It's actually my favorite uh, Creedence song. I have a buddy who, I don't know if he still does, I was going to say who does this, but this was back when he was in college. It was, if Creedence came on, everyone had to take their shirt off in the car. I wonder if he still does that. I wonder how we're doing. It says that the stream is at half strength. I wonder which now it says it's at red, which means one of these is is getting affected, be it Periscope, uh, Facebook, or YouTube. But I'm at my parents' internet, so I don't I don't know. Maybe I can try to hardwire in in the future. Um, it says one of these streams is getting affected terribly. But the YouTube crowd says it seems fine over there, and Enrique says Facebook is good, so whatever. Okay. Anyway, Lodi, California. We got known for wine, but not as good as Sonoma or Napa wine, but recently the Zinfandel has gained a lot of respect. <laughs> um, that's huge for them. Uh, the first dorm room I lived in, I went to Sonoma State University, go see wolves. And my dorm room was uh, Zinfandel. All the all the dorms were named after grapes. So I lived in Barbera, which was in Zin. Zinfandel, Barbera. And it was like the not nice dorms. People that lived in Sauvignon Blanc had all the fancy dorms. My girlfriend lived in Sav. Oh, you live in Sav? I'm in Zin. 
It was basically like the Stanford prison experiment. National recognition came from the song Lodi, correct credence Clearwater. Uh, it said, I read this, it was initially called Makaloom and Makaloom Station after the nearby river, but everyone got so damn confused. They're like, you need to change the name of that town. And then there was a lot of people from Lodi, Illinois, and they were like, well, let's just call it Lodi. We like Lodi, Illinois. There's Lodi, New Jersey as well. All right. This is where it is. Whoa. I need to recenter myself here. Oh, oh, producing on the fly, fixing the way I look in the top right corner. Crop. Oh, okay. Well, crop. Change. There's Stockton. Dallas Bradenville. There's Tracy. Lindsay Adlerville. There's Pleasanton, where my fiance's from. The Bay Area. For those really unfamiliar with the Bay Area, look, this is the Bay, and all around it is uh, the area. And then you go west, and that's where you find Lodi over by Delta Land. Um, I filmed a wedding over here once. This is a cool... The Altamont is a crazy drive if you're not from the area if you're from the east coast you'd probably be like whoa that's crazy because it's just windmill it's a windmill farm let me see if i can drop us on there this is where i used to live um i don't know which direction we're going where's all the windmills i bet i can just do it Altamont Pass windmills. They're pretty creepy. Oh, here you go. Oh. Open image in new tab. Doo, 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 doo. Look at all them windmills. So many. You can drive. Look at that. Looks like tombstones, but they're huge windmills. Altamont Pass. Anyway, so you go all the way out there to Lodi, and then and then you're in Delta Land. I don't really know what goes on out there. Western, in inland California. No one knows, but I filmed a wedding out here. It was when I I brought a second shooter and he and he forgot to hit record. <laughs> Something. It's like, ooh, that's the one main job, my dude. Lodi, what do you think they're... Uh, Creedence Clearwater's not from Lodi. They just said it was the coolest town name that they thought. What do you think the high school mascot is? Lodi Leopards. Lodi High School Football. Lodi Rams. That's in New Jersey. All the towns that have the same name should battle each other. Like the Lodi in California and Illinois and New Jersey, some dude with the last name Lodi, who's really rich, should front the money for there to be a, the the annual Lodi tournament. And any, every town, Lodi, maybe there's only three. Hopefully there's four. They have a little uh, football match. Lodi coaches George Duenas. Lodi, Mass, the Lodi Flames. Ooh. I don't know if that's kind of cool in California being the Flames. The Lodi Flames. Anything else from Lodi? You guys want to listen to uh, some Credence? Credence, Clearwater. I think all of Credence, Clearwater, Revival albums came in a four-year stretch. Which is insane to me. Let's see. Title album from May 1968 to April 1972. Yeah, 
How about that? I know my history. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven albums from Creedence Clearwater, and you probably could recognize ten plus songs, even if you say you don't know any. If you if you say I don't know any Creedence, there's ten songs that you would recognize, and they all came in a four year stretch. You know how quick four years is to put out that much good music? It's crazy. Um, Credence, Clearwater, Lodi. Let's see if there's a cool live version. Live in Europe. No, 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 no. You know, there's some, and this is it. Stuck in Lodi again. How many Beatles albums in seven years? Yeah, the Beatles are the best example of that. Like, all the Beatles shit came out before anyone turned 30. Crazy. Does it look like I'm super low to you? I feel like it looks like... Whoa. This chair doesn't go up. What? Okay. (laughs) Done with that. All right, well, we're moving on past Lodi, California. I'm glad we got to spend some time there. Everyone enjoyed it. We had ourselves a blast, but we're moving on to the baseball player. It was Claude Osteen. And the baseball player is brought to you by DraftKings this week. Week two of football is in the books, and now it's time to review the tape and get ready for week three. There is no better place to get in on all of the action than with DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. To add to the excitement of week three, DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing back their can't-miss offer. If you haven't tried DraftKings Sportsbook yet, head to the App Store now because you don't want to miss this. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new users the chance to turn $1 into $100 when they bet on any team. That's right, you can place a $1 bet on any team, and if that team wins, you cash a cool Benjamin. How could you pass that up? Don't worry if football isn't for you. DraftKings is giving you... DraftKings is giving all... You MMA fans, the same great offer to use for this weekend's UFC number 253. DraftKings is safe, reliable, and secure, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top of the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOMBO when you sign up to get this can't-miss offer. Pick any team during week three, bet $1 on them and win $100 if they win. That's $1 to win $100. When you use promo code John Boy during sign up for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey only. That's where I am. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook. For details, gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. I just kicked that ad's Reed's ass. I just kicked that ad Reed's ass. Remember last week? Remember last Monday? Ad Reed kicked my ass. I sounded like a guy who swallowed so many frogs, he'd become a frog. And now... I kick that ad reads ass. I'm the best. Uh, someone in the YouTube chat says, yo, John boy, I found your channel last week and my God, you're an amazing content creator. Your whole team rocks. And I have loved chugging your library for the past week. Keep on knocking. Thank you very much. Roly poly Panda. That is very nice of you. Compliments are nice. No one sit on any compliments today. Let's get them all out. If you thought something nice of someone, let them know. All right, Joel or Claude. Claude Osteen. Claude Osteen. They say it's pronounced Osteen. They say that you go a little soft O. Steen. Nickname, Gormer. Born August 9th, 1939. He's 81 years old. He's a pitcher. <clears throat> this guy was a little badass. Um, Dodgers fans, you probably know a lot about him. I don't. I did not. I did the, some light reading yesterday. He was a phenom. He made his debut at 17 years of age, and the story's kind of cool. Um, he was five foot 11, 160 pounds, and he was a high school pitcher, and... His high school coach was a scout for the Dodgers, 
and wanted him to sign with the Dodgers, but the Dodgers wouldn't guarantee a major league roster spot, which sounds about as normal as possible because, dude, you're uh, you're a 17-year-old senior in high school. Why would we guarantee you a roster spot? But the Reds guaranteed him a roster spot, and Osteen commented, I have the confidence that I can win in the majors right now, and I want the chance to prove it. The balls on that 17-year-old Claude Osteen. That's crazy, man. So he goes to the Reds, all right, and they start him right away in 1957. He's 17 years old because they guaranteed that he would start. They pitch him in relief in two games and then immediately send him down to the minors. <laughs> it's like, the Dodgers could have done that. That was just the game they played. Yeah, sure, kid. We'll guarantee you a major league spot. Put you right up with the big boys. And then, and then you know, he gets. I think he got knocked around. Let's go look at his debut. It was July 6th, Cincinnati Red Legs versus St. Louis Cardinals. Um, Cardinals won 13-3. to three. We'll do a little, what year are we in? 57. I'm not expecting a lot of nicknames, but we'll do a little nickname check. We got Johnny Temple, Don Gross, Frank, Gus, George, Don, Ed, Roy, Wally. I mean, that's just 19. Uh, Johnny, Art, Joe, Hirsch, Jerry, Ralph. No, not a lot. Not a lot of nicknames. Don, Al, Dick, Stan, Bobby, Joe, Dell, Eddie, Ken, Hal, Eddie, Murray, Willard. So let's see this little kid. I mean, 17-year-old dude. 17-year-old Claude. When did he get in the game? All right. He came in in the bottom of the seventh inning. It was 10-3. to Uh, Was there anyone on base? Double home run. Fly ball. Two on base. There's a single and a walk, and then the pitcher got replaced. So then they bring in 17-year-old Claude Osteen. His first batter is Hal Smith. I kind of want to find out how old Hal Smith was. Um, in 1957, how old was Hal Smith? 26. Okay. I mean, that's seven. That's 26. That's, what, nine years older than Claude, who's 17? So he gets him to fly out. Then he faces Eddie, Eddie Casco. How old was Eddie? The third baseman. Eddie, what, 1957, was also 26. Okay. Okay. He gets him to uh, Eddie singles, which then loads the bases. Now you got bases loaded. One out. No, two outs. Bases loaded, two outs. And then we get a pass ball to score one, a wild pitch to score two, and a single to score three. Probably was shitting himself, man. 17-year-old, bases loaded now? That all happened versus Willard Schmidt. So, that's funny. So, all, all three scored during the one batter, but that guy only got one RBI. And then he walked the next batter, and then they took him out. No, then, they, then he got a ground out. So, it's kind of funny, because then, then he... He went back to the minors at 18. He spent the whole year in 1958. He spent the whole year in the minor leagues. And then eventually he found his way to the Dodgers. And he won. He won game three of the 1965 World Series. That's the year that uh, the Dodgers were down 2-0 after the first two games uh, with, um, who is it, Drysdale and... um, why am I blanking? Why am I blanking? Uh, da, 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 da. Koufax. I think Koufax didn't pitch game one because it was Jan Kippur, and then, and then they were down 2-0. So, so our dude Claude 
had to pitch game three. He said he was on the plane flying to game three, and everyone that walked past his seat would just touch him on the shoulder and be like, you got this. You got this, dude. You got this. Pretty huge game three to have to pitch. But he did. He goes, what was his final line? Complete game shutout. Five hits. Game three of the World Series against the Twins. That's pretty huge, huh? I wonder if there's highlights of that. Claude Ostein. World Series. Video. Relive the 1966 Baltimore. 1965. It's got to be video now. We don't have video of the 65 World Series. There's a picture of him. Is this his family? Uh, Open link in new tab. Lebanon Sports Buzz. What is this all about? Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I got lost down the rabbit hole. I don't even know what I what I was trying to find. I have no idea. Nine oh nineteen nineteen sixty five World Series Game Three. Oh, these highlights are in color. Let's go. What a song! Minnesota. What a song! Why don't we use that anymore? Why isn't that a known song? Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. It's the lane in a World Series. West Parker. More. Barely looks on from the other end this time as the ball sails high into the How old was Vin Scully in 1965? 25? This footage is excellent. It's like, looks like it's in Kodachrome. Look at that. In the Twins' third, Frank Quillacy latches one past Gilliam with umpire Ed Sudol right there to make it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys. I got bad news. I want to watch this whole damn thing. This is great stuff. That brings Grant to the plate. Drysdale checks the runner at second. Grant lays down a bunt. Drysdale's bad knee gives way momentarily. Oh, no. While fielding the ball. Don. But he recovers, gets off a throw. It's short and bounces once into the hands of Jim Lefevre. Oh, he made the play. No. Umpire Benson sees Lefevre isn't in control of the ball. Oh, Grant holy shit. Quillacy has moved to third. On the that whole play was a, a, a trip, man. For a sign. No sign. Drysdale pitches and Versailles gets around on this one. He pulls it down the line. Home run. home run. God damn. This is the best thing I've seen in a long time. In the ninth, there are... Maury Wills and Willie Davis certainly... The Mudcat still is on cloud nine. Coming let's, around wanna, let's watch the final celebration. Perhaps two. And the Dodgers still lead two to out. With one out, 
Killebrew singles to left. I am interested in this whole thing. Parker talks with Colfax. Okay. Colfax faces Earl Batty and fans him on the third pitch. Now Sandy is one out away from victory. All right. Bob one out away. Into the batter's box, representing the tying run. However, Colfax reaches back for one final burst of energy, and Allison fans. The Dodgers win. The Dodgers are the new world champions. A very mundane celebration. Catcher. To vanquish a powerful Minnesota team. In the end, it was the golden arm of Sandy That's Colfax that lifted the celebration. The final dramatic triumph. It's the fourth World Series victory for manager Alston. A new National League record. That video is phenomenal, and I want to watch the whole thing. But we have to move on. That's just kind of the way cookie crumbles here, and it's 930. All right, uh, moving on. Next up, uh, book. Wow. That was that crazy. Post the link. So you guys want the link to that? Here we go. I'll post it in the – If you want, the, the title of it is just 1965 World Series Highlights. Um, 46-57. 46, Sure Signs, Coozer. I didn't bring a lot of my books. This one I brought. Um, 46, 57, 56, Poem. Have we done Pocket Poem before? Pocket Poem. If this comes creased and creased again and soiled as if... I'd opened it a thousand times to see what I'd written. Here was right. It's all because I looked for you too long to put it in your pocket. Midnight says the little girl. Back up, Jimmy. If this comes creased and creased again and soiled as if I'd opened it a thousand times to see if what I'd written here was right. It's all because I looked for you too long to put it in your pocket. Midnight says the little gifts of loneliness come wrapped by nervous fingers. What I wanted this to say was that I want to be so close that when you find it, it is warm from me. Just thinking about someone. Just thinking about someone wants to wants to write them a little poem, slip it in their pocket. So when they find it. It's still got a little warmth from him to to them on it. Wants to make sure it's perfect, though, so he keeps opening it, reading it, cro- creasing it open, creasing it closed. A little pocket poem. What of it? Nothing. 57. Page 57. Heinz Ketchup. A little pocket poem. That's all. What I wanted this to say was that I want to be so close that when you find it, it is warm from me. Just wants to be next to him, I guess. Oh, Blue Jays thinking about the offseason after the Yanks play them this week. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Yanks clinch. That's exciting. Uh, Wake and Jake will start very soon. Talking baseball will, will be live today. On patrons at uh, like you know ten fifteen or whatever, there's a talking Yanks out there recapping the Red Sox series. Um, there's probably a pinstripe strong out there, and there's probably some other stuff. I didn't change the thing, um, so go check out everything. Deal. Let me check real quick, make sure there's and and I wasn't live all last week, but if you're into movies and into music. Uh, Nick Proach, who who runs all the music here, did did uh they're starting soundtracks, and they started with the Big Lebowski, and it's really really cool. If you like music and movies and the way those two weave together, it's good. And then the pregame show for Talking Yanks and Talking Baseball will be up. Um, aren't the Jays a few games up in the wild card? Over who? No, I don't think so. I think they're the eight seed. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see. Oh, we got a new talking Knicks today. And then there was a talking folk on Friday that I didn't get to. And there was a sequence on Thursday, Kirby Puckett, Trevor breaks down the solo. Um, so there's a lot of stuff out. Go check it all out. 
We appreciate you. We love you. We love you. All right. I'm going to play this song by Bob Schneider, and then we're going to head on our merry way. I can't say your name. And I, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm feeling better. I think I'll be back all week. Bye. At first, it gave me quite a Have scare. a good day, everyone. But now I like the effect. It's not what one would expect. It comes in handy every once in a while. I've grown accustomed to my charcoal smile. I live, I live in, the sea. in the sea. With the spiders and the enemies. They are what I would call very good company at all. They're the company I keep Can't be too picky in the deep